Pastor Rodney, the second response. This confession by Peter, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, is the rock upon which Jesus will build his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus' church is composed of Jesus' body of believers. All those who have been given this confession by God that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, belong to Jesus' church. All others do not. The Apostle Paul in Romans 10, <coughs> verses 8 through 12, expounds upon this life-transforming foundational confession. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach, which we now have in our Bibles. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth upon him shall not be ashamed. This confession is not an incantation. One can simply recite that will produce or trigger the new birth Jesus speaks of in John chapter 3. This confession requires more than just a lipping of words. It requires a full, soul-trusting faith in who the Lord Jesus is and what He has done for us. There are those who have answered Jesus' question, Whom say ye that I am? Sounding much like Peter. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who are not saved at all. They have a belief response founded upon a flesh and blood or mortal way of thinking. They say that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, but they do not at all understand who Jesus truly is. Because God has not given it to them to understand who he is. They have reduced Jesus to something less than eternal God. Who is this Lord Jesus? If you look in your Old Testaments, the word Lord in all caps stands in place of the word Yahweh or Jehovah, the personal name of God. God revealed his name to Moses from out of the burning bush upon the mountain of God. We read in Exodus 3, 13 through 15. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall, shall say to them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, <coughs> hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. God is... He is the self-existent one, the I am that I am. His title declares that he is the only one, he who was and is and will be, all-sufficient, absolute, eternal one, I am. Jesus laid claim to this title, I am. 
all throughout the Gospels. In John 8, 12, Jesus tells the Pharisees that I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John had testified earlier in chapter 1 that Jesus was the true light, which coming into the world lighted every man. Later in that chapter, John 8, 23 through 24, Jesus said unto them, the Pharisees, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. The translators have added the word he. In the original Greek, it reads, For if ye believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. In the original Greek, Jesus stated, Ego emi. Here Jesus is applying the sacred name of God, the I am, to himself. And declaring that if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. You will be damned. The usual way of expressing I am in Greek is simply amy. It is a verb that expresses being. However, Jesus uses the emphasized form of ego emi. Literally, I, I am. The same form used in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Scriptures in Exodus 3, for the sacred name of God. I am that I am. Ego emi. This is the exposition of the name Jehovah or Yahweh. I am is Yahweh, the personal name of God. Let's return to the discourse in John chapter 8. In verse 33, the Jews said to Jesus that they were Abraham's seed. In verse 37, Jesus said to them, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. In verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Jesus proceeds to tell them that they are of their father the devil, that he himself is from God, that he speaks the truth, and that if anyone keeps his saying, they will never see death. The Jews answered him in verse 52, Now we know that, that, that thou hast the devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham? And the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? In this back and forth dialogue between Jesus and the Jews, we see Jesus progressively declaring that He, Himself, is God. In verse 54, Jesus said that His Father honors Him, of whom ye say that He is your God. In verse 55, Jesus tells the Jews that they have not known God, but He knows Him. Finally, in John 8, 56-58, Jesus said to them, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Ego in me. Then took they up stones to cast at him. 
Jesus is declaring plainly that he is the I am, the ego ami, God eternal, God who existed before Abraham, Lord, Yahweh, God who not only created Abraham, but everything else in all existence. The Jews knew exactly what he was saying and sought to stone him for blasphemy. Again, when Jesus said in John 10, 30 through 33, I and my Father are one, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not. But for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus uses the I am title of God, ego and me, I, I am, given to Moses on Mount Horeb, in referring to himself at least seven places in the book of John alone. I am the bread of life, John 6, 35. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. I am the door of the sheep, John 10, 7. I am the good shepherd, John 10, 11. I am the resurrection and the life, John 11, 25. I am the true vine, John 15, 1. And I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father, but by me, through me, John 14, 6. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Are you responding to Christ's question with the words of Peter, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God? but with the flesh and blood understanding of the masses, with an answer that cannot save you from the wrath of God? When you say that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, do you realize that Jesus actually is God? And nothing less than God? And when I say that He is God... Have you redefined God to mean something less than God? The one and only eternal God. Is your God a God of your own making? Is your God an idol? Have you created a God with your own hands? Have you created a God in your own image? God revealed to Moses his name, Yahweh. And define who he was. I am that I am. The self-existent one. The only one. The Shema. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6.4 God also gave Moses commandments concerning himself. We read in Exodus 23-7. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. God is who He is. God has told us who He is in His Word. 
If you have made a God, defined a God as something other than what the Bible, God's Word, has told us, you are worshiping a graven image. You are bowing down and serving a God of your own making. Even if you put the name of Jesus Christ upon this God, it is still a false God. It is an idol, and it cannot save you. But whom say ye that I am? Moses commanded the children of Israel to have no idols before them, no other gods, but to only worship Yahweh thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. We have seen in Jesus' own words that he is Yahweh, the I am of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 40. 4.39, Moses tells Israel, Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, He is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Approximately 700 years after Moses, the prophet Isaiah wrote, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. It is vitally, eternally important that you know with your mind and with your heart who Jesus truly is. Your everlasting residence depends upon it. <coughs> Lord Jesus, Yahweh Jesus, God Jesus. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and yet do not understand or believe who Jesus is, your confession will mean nothing. Your confession will not save you from the wrath of God. If you believe that Jesus is anything less than the very God, your confession of Jesus being Lord has not the power to save you. Knowing who Jesus is, is essential to the gospel. Paul told the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 3, 2, 5, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. <coughs> Stop crossing your fingers behind your back when you say you agree with Peter's confession of Christ. Stop making caveats. Stop qualifying the Word of God. Stop modifying the Scriptures to fit your own preconceived set of beliefs. Quit twisting and warping the clear meaning of God's written Word to fit your flesh and blood answers. If you say, I believe that Jesus is God, while silently thinking of this earth, or even of this universe, holding to the belief that there are other earths or other universes where Jesus is not God, your belief in Jesus is a false idol and will not save you. If you say, I believe that Jesus is eternally God, while silently thinking that there was a time before eternity, when Jesus wasn't God, your belief in Jesus is a false idol and will not save you. Or if you think that there are other eternities where other Jesuses exist, 
Your belief in Jesus is a false idol and will not save you. If you say, I believe that Jesus is God, while secretly thinking that Jesus is a created being, your elder brother in some pre-existent spirit world, again, you created an idol, a false god, you put on it the name of Jesus, that idol cannot save you. If you say, I believe that Jesus is God, while secretly thinking that one day you will become a God over an earth and have those people upon that earth worship you and call you God, you have believed the lie of the serpent that he told the woman, ye shall be as gods in Genesis 3, 5. You've created of yourself a false idol. A false God. And you have blasphemed the name of God. And if you continue to believe in this lie, you, like Satan, will be cast into the lake of fire to be punished with everlasting torment. Paul warned the Colossians not to reject Christ because of mortal reasoning. Look in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the rudiments of men, or after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And Paul spoke of the, of the Jews' unbelief of Christ because of their own righteousness in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 2 through 4. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Romans 10, 2-4 But whom say ye that I am? The Apostle John, in chapter 1 of the book of John, Verses 1 through 5 and verse 14 gives a clear, God-exalting confession of who Jesus is. Hear it, and let the Word of God regenerate your heart. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Fifteen years after I had had that dream, I still did not know who Jesus was and is. I thought he was like me, someone created in the spirit world, I thought that there were many gods. I thought that men could become gods. I had been deceived my whole life into believing the lie of the serpent, old Satan. He who wanted to exalt himself above God, his creator. Fifteen years after I had had that dream, I found myself face down on the floor in a hellhole of a prison in Florence, Arizona, crying out to God for help. Help me, God. 
Help me, God. Help me, God. And though I did not see him, nor did I audibly hear him, Jesus came to me in my cell. He didn't reveal himself to me. I still didn't know who he was. But he gave me the path to know who he was. Two things were given to me. I was to read the New Testament as if I had never read it before. And I flashed back to that dream. Like I was in that dream. I brought no preconceived notions into reading the New Testament. I read it as a child. And the second thing, I was to believe every word of that book. That it was holy, inspired by God. I was faithful to that command. I read and reread the New Testament many, many times. And God showed me through His Word who He is. And finally, I came to know that Jesus is the Lord, eternal God. I can now answer the question that Jesus asked, Whom say ye that I am? From the words of the Apostle John in 1 John 5.20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. And we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Without knowing who Jesus is, the Gospel does not the power to save you. The gospel. We are told in Romans 3 that there are none righteous, no, not one, that the whole world lieth guilty before our holy God. We are told in Romans 6 that the wages of sin is death. We are told in Romans 5 that while we were yet in our sins, Jesus died for us if as we are told in Romans 10, 9 through 10, if we will confess with our mouths that Jesus is the Lord, the I Am, Yahweh, eternal God, and believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. Whom do you, whom do you say that Jesus is? I challenge you to believe in Him now as eternal God, uncreated, creator of all that is. I challenge you to believe that He died for you on the cross to pay the price for your sins. I challenge you to repent of your sins, humble yourselves, and accept the eternal Lordship of Jesus Christ over your life. Father God, we come before you desiring to exalt you, to know you. And we know the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. At your wrath the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide your indignation. You shall say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. For you have made the earth by the power of your word. You have established the world by your wisdom, and you have stretched out the heavens by your discretion. In Jesus' name.